Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla, and you've reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy, and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, today <laughs> is a very special extra video, as you guys know, because you clicked on the thumbnail. Um, today is my 2023 Whip Parade. Yay! So I love doing whip parades. I love watching whip parades. I mean, I know they're usually extra long, but I'm good with that. Um, it's just a fun way for me to show off all my projects at once. It's really actually good for me to kind of revisit things that I maybe haven't worked on in a little bit of time to kind of uh, redevelop the juices and or the opposite to say, you know what, I haven't worked on this and I'm really not excited to work on it. So maybe I need to rethink it. I mean, it's just, it's really good all around, I think. So I've been doing a whip parade since I started stitching in 2019. And then two years ago, I also started doing a finish parade. So I do a whip parade at the very end of the year and then I do my finish parade at the very beginning of the next year. Um, so that one will be coming next weekend. So, um, without further ado, we should get started because I have a feeling this is gonna be kind of a long one. Um, I have several projects to show you. And in addition to my cross stitch, um, I did start crocheting this year. So I started another hobby like I needed another hobby, right? Um, but I have some whips, some crochet whips that I wanted to just kind of throw in at the beginning as well um, because I've been enjoying them. So let's get started. First thing I want to show you, this is actually a whip that I've had probably for 30-ish years. Um, more than that, maybe, I don't know. Um, and I just pulled it out this year with the intention of I need to get it done. It is a latch hook, little rug. I'm gonna hold it up, but I won't be able to see exactly what I'm doing when I, when I hold it up. But as you can see, I only have this much left to do. So why it's been hanging around forever is beyond me. Um, it is filthy. Um, not like like dirty, like um, like dusty dirty. And so I just really, really want to just soak it. Um, but I, I don't want to do that until I get it finished. So um, I pulled it out and I worked on it a couple times just in the last like month or so. And um, prior to that, I don't think I've worked on this since, since I've been in this apartment, which has been since 2018. So um, yeah, hopefully in the next couple months, I can just kind of buckle down, spend couple days you know working on that and get it done and then get it cleaned get it finished which I've never done before but I looked at some videos on how to finish a rug and then it'll be I think on my floor <laughs> and then it'll get full of black cat hair because I have a feeling Baggy's gonna love to lay on it okay so <clears throat> crochet uh whips as I said, I started crocheting this year. I taught myself to crochet. I don't know why, I got a bug in my ear. Um, and basically I've done uh, amigurumi, so little figures, and um, a few, I've started a few sort of garmenty things. Um, I'm into the shrug. The idea of a shrug for myself. I am a bigger person, and I'm, since I'm new to crochet, um, the sort of idea of sort of an unstructured, sort of cocoony type, sweater without having to set arms or do anything like that is is perfect for me so i i finished a lot of projects so those i'll show you next week but um the things that i have that are current whips i have two amigurumis i have this little baby dragon this is a, a pattern by megan lap crafty intentions and he's done except for his little wings um but i just kind of stalled out on doing that so i have to get back and put his wings on and he'd be done. Um, he's so cute. I mean, obviously not perfect. Obviously a beginner. It's not a beginner project. It is a project done by a beginner, um, <laughs> but it's not a beginner project, which makes it um, a little bit more challenging. Um, but I just think he's adorable. And I do definitely want to um, make more. There's her pattern has like all these different positions because basically you can choose different leg styles which will make them stand up or sit up or it, just all different kinds of things you can do. And um, so I am anxious to make more of these guys once I get his wings finished. Um, the other amigurumi piece that I'm in the process of making is a Mario, uh, which eventually will have a Luigi as well for my nephew. 
Um, I just have his head so far, but I think he's going to be pretty cute. Um, this little corner of the hat doesn't want to lay flat, so that's driving me crazy. I don't know. Maybe if I wet it and try and like block it down, I think I probably didn't do it perfectly, but I think he's pretty cute. And when he's done, he's supposed to have articulating neck and arms. So, you know, I got the, um, the pieces necessary. They, you know, they twist so you can move the arms and head and stuff. Okay. Then the garments that I am working on, um, one of my shrugs is the giant granny square shrug. So again, with shrugs, basically you just crochet or knit a large square or rectangle piece and then when it's the right size you fold down either like fold it in half or you fold like the corners in and you sew it to where you've got a sleeve kind of built in so this again is the granny square shrug it's just basically a giant granny square and you just keep going until it's the right length uh, or the right size for the size garment you want I'm doing this one with a Sunset Night uh, acrylic yarn by Lion Brand. Um, this is a three strand yarn and it has a little sequin. There's like three colors, yeah, dark, medium, light that are twisted together in to make what, five, uh, five stripe sections. Um, and the middle color has a little sequin in it. But um, this is pretty easy to do, although I will say that this is kind of a splitty yarn, which is can be a little bit annoying to work with. Um, okay, I started this um, scarf slash shrug slash wrap. I don't know what it's going to be exactly um, because I was really I saw this stitch online and I was really uh, intrigued to try this. Uh, strawberry stitch which I do love but I made this really long piece thinking that I would have it as a wrap this way and I think I want to change it I want to like frog this and then do it with the other way so make it maybe this wide and go down that way and make it make a scarf that way um, so I haven't decided yet but this one um the red is Corone uh, Simply Soft in Party, uh, or Simply Soft Party in, what is the color? Red Sparkle. Um, I love Corone Simply Soft. I like the way it feels. It stitches pretty easy. And then the green on that is a uh, Lion Brand Ferris Wheel. And this is Evergreen. Oh, and I forgot to say, um, the color of the granny square is Isle of Sky. Okay, then I started a uh, floral cami um, for my niece. I have no idea when I'm gonna get this done, but I thought it was a cute pattern. This is also a uh, Chrome Simply Soft um, I think this is Simply Soft Party. Oh no, Simply Soft Paints. Yeah, Simply Soft Paints in Baby Brights. And so this is kind of a real mesh sort of net thing, which I think is kind of interesting to work on. So obviously don't have very much done on this. And then And then I have another shrug that I'm working on, which is also Simply Soft Paints in Oceana. And this is how far I've gotten on that. And I think this is called a reverse blanket stitch, I think. Again, um, pretty simple, you know, pattern, stitch pattern. But kind of makes a scallop on the side. 
which I think is gonna be pretty for like the armholes and stuff. <clears throat> so that's those. And then last but not least, this is a shrug that I just started like last week. Um, loved the yarn and and this is going super fast. Um, this I'm using oops, a Bernat Pop in the color Scarlet Sizzle. And this yarn is like super easy to work with. Um, and as I said, it's just, it's going super fast. So that's where I am on this one. So that is all my crochet. I just wanted to kind of run through it really quick. Oops. Okay, so that is all of the non cross stitch stuff. So now we can get into the cross stitch. So last year, um, I was coming to a place where um, I don't really have a problem having a lot of whips um, for the most part, but I do reach a point where I feel a little bit like pressured by them or overwhelmed or whatever. And so I kind of thought about it and I realized there were certain uh, patterns or whips that I had that I just wasn't really enthused about for whatever reason. And, but I wasn't at a place yet where I wanted to like completely throw them away or tear them apart or whatever. Um, so I, I created an inactive list because for me, it's like I have them then in this inactive pile. Um, and I don't feel pressure for not stitching on them because I've already decided I'm not stitching on them. So one of the things that, um, that this, whip parade is going to help me is when I look at those, uh, I think there's six on the list right now. Um, there's a couple that might come off that list this year and get put back as inactive. Um, and I may have some things that are currently active that I'm realizing I'm not enjoying and they may get put into this inactive pile. And then there may be some that it's time to decide I'm never going to work on this again. I don't want to complete this and let's call it finished and do whatever we need to do. So these are what I'm considering or what I have on my inactive list. I do have one that I still can't find. I couldn't find it last year. I can't find it this year. I know I have it because I haven't thrown away anything like that, but it's got to be like tucked away in some corner that I haven't opened. I don't know, but okay. So the first one on this inactive list is a long dark sampler froth and bubble. And I actually really love this chart. Um, the reason that I kind of stopped working on it is because this fabric that I chose is very difficult to work with. It hurts my hands. Um, it's so stiff and I just, it's just not enjoyable to work on. So that's basically what has happened. So it's been stuck in here and eventually I think it will come out and I'll want to stitch on it again, but I'm not at that place right now. Okay, this is stuff for froth and bubble okay um this is a uh bead embroidery kit it's called ringing meadows um i'm not at the point where i want to like get rid of it but i really don't think i'm ever going to come back to this i have too many other bead things that um like I have, I have so many like Mirabilia's and, and Bella Filipinas and that kind of thing that um, fulfill any need to be that I just don't know that I'm going to come back to this. Um, what I might do, because it's basically this big long pattern that's repeating. So I was thinking what I might do is like suck it up <laughs> 
and like cut it off at like a certain point like find a good like like stopping place where I get like a, one of the tall purple you know and a butterfly and maybe finish it to there and then call that a finish and then get rid of the rest um so I have to think about that that might be some something to do um but then I still have quite a bit more work to do on it and uh, I don't know it is super pretty but it, it almost feels like it's a waste of my time. It's like, you know, I could be doing other stuff that's better or more important. The one that I can't find is uh, Chester's Place by Whistle Stop Stitcher. Um, I, I don't know where it is. I... I'm at a loss. Um, eventually I'm going to find it and <laughs> it'll be a big shocker. Okay. This is a meal health kit. Um, pomegranate. And I, I'm feeling like this might come out of off the, uh, non-active whip list this year because I do like it um actually I don't even know if that's the right way up but anyway I do like this um and I don't have any full-on um mill hills that are going right now so I'm thinking this one might come off the whip list and we will work on it again this year <clears throat> so I'm going to actually not put it back in that bag. I'm going to put it over here. Um, this is the Blue Flowers Night Walk Down, which I absolutely love this chart. But it is giant. Um, I started it for my Black Cat Birthday Sal last year, 2022, I believe. Or 2021. I can't remember now. 2021, maybe. Um, and I hand dyed this linen, love the color, hate working on linen and I can't get past that. And it's also like a 36 count or something. Um, yeah, 36 count opalescent linen. It's so tiny to work on and I don't like linen and you know, I got this much done because I wanted to work on the black cat. It was for my black cat birthday sale, right? Um, and then wasn't enjoying it. So I put it on the inactive pile. Hold on. I don't think I'm ever going to go back to this. Oops. So I'm thinking it may be time to take what I've stitched and call it done. I mean, I. Am I showing you the front of the back? I'm showing you the front. Okay. So I have the girl and the and the cat. And I, you know, I could maybe maybe stitch the words and then just frame it, or maybe just frame her with the flowers. I don't know. I'm gonna have to make a decision on this because I just don't feel like I really want to work on it anymore. Even though it is really pretty. I just, especially like the border, it's like, that is tedious. I don't even want to do that, but I already started it. So I can't just say, oh, I'm not going to do the border because I already started it. So yeah, I need to make a decision on this one. I don't know if I will make a decision on it this year, but uh, I know the decision right now is I really don't want to work on it anymore. And this, <clears throat> this one I think is going to come off of the inactive list this year. Um, this is Pavain for these times by Log Dog Samplers. I started this in 2020, you know, when everybody was doing 2020 pandemic sampler and everything. I started this one instead, um, which I just think is really pretty. And it's, uh, it says, turn your face to the sun and the shadows fall behind you. It's a Log Dog Sampler. It's huge. Um, and I'm doing this on a 20 count uh, Ada with Sulky. And I just finished this this week. I finished um, 
my sampler shot so you're not gonna see it in this video but I was also doing that one on a 20 count uh, with uh, sulky which I loved so now that that one's done I think this one can go back into the pile and I'm doing this with a variegated sulky and then an accent color so I think this one is going to come off of the inactive for this year. Okay, so those are my in, my, my inactives, uh, minus the one that I can't find. And then I have a couple of projects that I think as we go through, I'm going to possibly make the decision like, yep, this one, I'm not enjoying it. It's going to go in the inactive pile for a while. Okay, so I have all of my whips here in these two baskets plus a couple things that are like big projects that are in um like bags on the ground so let's let's get going <laughs> all right i'm doing these in pretty much order of them being started the older ones um may not be a hundred percent accurate just because um i wasn't keeping records then of like the date i started it but everything else um once i get past like the first five or six um then we pretty much know that they are actually in correct order okay first one This is uh, All Hallows Eve by Glendon Place. Um, I'm not gonna pull out the thing. Uh, in interest of uh, time, um, but I have been saying for the last couple years, oh, I'm gonna get this finished this year. Um, you know, and it still quite, hasn't quite happened. Um, so it's got like the 12 days of Halloween. And as far as the words I'm, at the five glowing pentagrams. Um, so what's left to do, well, you know what? I'm sitting right here, I'll pull it out. I have a mess to clean up anyway. It's what's making it, what's the problem with making it worse? Okay, so we've got Glendon Place All Hallows Eve. So what I'd love to do is the skeleton. These, I will show you, um, I don't have buttons, but I have these metal things that I'm going to put on for these. So for cross stitch wise, I have the skeleton left to do, the vulture and the pumpkins, and then all the words down here. So that's not a ton. Um, I probably won't pull this out again until next, like September, October. Um, and then will I get it done? I don't know, but I'm not super concerned. Um, I really enjoy working on this every year um at sort of the halloween season so yeah this year i finished the ghoul and i finished the vampire and then a bunch of words and this is on a 14 count picture this plus uh, no 16 count picture this plus jewel ada and um I really enjoy this. This is like was my first, um, because it was so early in my stitching. This is kind of a uh, try all the flosses, try all the different things. So it had satin and whisper and sparkly and things I'd never used before, which I've used now, but okay. Next, to everything there is a season. Um, I started this one in, I know I started it in August of 2019. Um, in honor of my dad, because this was one of his favorite uh, songs by the birds. He, I remember he taught one of my Sunday school classes one year and he brought in his reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and played that song. And um, I got this off of eBay. It is sort of old fashioned-ish. It's a pattern from 1994. Um, I just really, I like it. Um, the problem, again, because I was a baby stitcher when I started stitching this, and I <laughs> chose DMC Light Effects for the sparkly um, border, which I hate using, so that I have to do a little bit every time I pull this out, or I will never finish this project. So, 
Um, again, I've been working on this since 2019. I have no plans of getting it done anytime soon. I just work on it a little bit each year and think about my dad when I do it. And that's, that's good. So, um, this year I did finish the uh, spring little thing. <laughs> so that's how far I am on this. And this is on a 14 count Blue Dynasty, Ada. And I pulled all my own classes, you know, cause I was just, I was pulling from stash. So some of it is what's called for, some of it isn't. It's definitely a project that you can tell it was one of the first ones I did. This also uh, was from that period. Um, which I am doing in honor of my dad. It's what I'm calling my classic poo. This is the picture. This teeny little picture and the project is giant. Giant. Which I didn't realize at the time because again, I was brand new. Um, I saw this fabric. This is, it's called Gelati. 16 count Gelati Ada. And, um, I saw this on eBay back then and thought it was like really cool looking. And then, but I didn't buy it cause I kept thinking like, what would you use it for? It's like this blue fabric with these big pink splotches on it. And then when I saw, thought about doing a pattern with poo and the, the balloon and stuff, um, I thought, oh, that's going to look like sky with pink clouds. So I got it and this is just going to fit. I mean, there's like very s smallish margins because it, it is just going to fit. So I've been working on this balloon for four years. <laughs> it just like never seems to get smaller. Um, maybe that's a goal for this year is get the balloon done and maybe get poo outlined. And then I can spend the next 10 years filling him in. But the reason that this one makes me think of my dad is, um, I tell this story every time, but, um, he was reading me the story of you know poo this this story you know where poo is trying to get the honey with the balloon and falls and in the book it says he fell into a prickle bush and he stands up and is wiping prickles off his nose but when my dad was reading it he misread it and he said he stood up and he's wiping pickles off his nose and I just thought that that was hilarious and I've always remembered that story and that moment with my dad so that's why this this um this project means a lot to me um now when I started my little golden book journey which is if you watch my channel you know I've been making little golden book journals for the last couple of years um and I bought lots of, uh, of little golden books, like, because that was the cheapest way to get it. Like you could get 50 books for, you know, 30 bucks or whatever, you know, or $40 and you're getting them for less than a dollar each. So I did that. So I was getting books that I didn't know what I was be getting. And in one of those lots of books, I got this book, which is the story. So I have it in with the project and I just, um, I love that. I don't know if the prickle thing is in here. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. He's just about to reach for the honey when the branch was sitting on went crack. Uh, by this time, Pooh had already hit the ground with a thump. As Pooh brushed the prickles from his nose, he decided he needed help in getting the honey. But my dad had read when, as he brushed the pickles from his nose, and that was, that's why. <laughs> so I have that memory of my dad who died when I was 10, in case um, you weren't aware of that. Um, so yeah, that memory is like really special to me. Come on. Okay. Uh, Mouth of the Flower. Mouth of the Flower by Octavio Ocampo. Um, I... I don't see a lot of people stitching on this. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody stitching on this. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm doing it on a 16 count touch of peach, Ada. Don't 
don't have a ton done. Just that much. But again, most of these projects, you know, especially these older ones, I'm not going to hurry to get them done. Um, I work on them a little bit. They, they slot into my, um, my themes, my monthly themes where they slot in and then I work on them and that's, that's fine. They'll get done eventually or they won't and I don't care. <laughs> um, okay. This home. Now this one was on my list to get finished this year and I don't think it's going to happen, um, before the end of the year. So it'll probably go back into, uh, back to sleep. Um, until April when I work on my friends and family pieces and then hopefully I will get it finished and then I can send it to Stacy for her birthday. Um, where's my cover? So this is, I got from Etsy, um, Agata Perez, it was the site, Love for Cross Stitch on Etsy. And it says this home runs on cuddles and caffeine. Um, I changed it to this mom because it's for my sister-in-law. My brother does not drink caffeine, but my sister-in-law is drinking coffee or iced tea morning till night, 24 hours a day, basically. And um, she's a homeschool mom, so I just thought that this was perfect for her. So this year I finished the cuddles, which it's hard for me to read backwards, but in front words, it looks great. So hopefully you're seeing it. And um, I dyed this fabric myself and I'm using all DMC variegated flosses that I just had in my stash. And I just picked colors that I thought would look good. So the and is in the same color as the runs on and then the caffeine will be in the purple. Um, and then I have a brown variegated for the, the coffee beans. So that's for my sister-in-law and then I have a project for my brother which is not close enough to being finished at all so this is my Star Trek piece um, so my brother and I have kind of shared a nerdy culture enjoyment um, our whole lives uh, Star Trek our dad loves Star Trek and my brother loves Star Trek and they both kind of got me into it too um, so when I went to go pick a project that I wanted to do for him, I found um, these these charts on Etsy. Um, Fangirl Stitches. And I got the four. I got the original series, Next Generation, Voyager, and um, Deep Space Nine. And I'm putting them all in one piece. So, basically... The original series just said Star Trek under it. So I put that at the top and then I charted the original series based on, you know, all the letters and the other charts. Um, the only, and this is on 14 count looking glass, opal, Ada by Under the Sea Fabrics. So the only like change basically that I've made is, um, these were charted just with cross stitches for the eyes and I didn't like the way that looked. So I tried doing fresh knots and I didn't like the way that looked. They looked totally demented because I couldn't get the knots to be the same. So you have one big eye and one little eye. Now that was crazy. So <laughs> the eyes are being beaded and I'm trying to like, you know, put the right colors. Like, you know, like uh, Doc definitely had blue eyes. So he's got blue and I think Picard has green eyes and blah, blah, blah. So. That's why I'm on that. So I have to finish Next Generation and then I have still Voyager and Deep Space Nine to do on that. So I don't think my brother's gonna get that this year or this coming year, but it's okay. 
I basically have told all of my friends and family that if I'm making them a project, I'll tell them that I'm making it for them. Um, cause I'm, I can't keep secrets. I don't have that kind of chill. Um, but I also tell them like, I have no idea when, when you will get it, if you'll get it this year or in 10 years. I'm not good when I put deadlines on projects cause then I totally don't want to work on them. Okay, next is Village Bookstore, which was on the, um, it was on the inactive list, and then I took it off this year to work on it one time because I pulled it out when I was doing a full coverage video, and it made me want to work on it, and I'm back to thinking it's going to go in the inactive pile, <laughs> just because it's so huge, and... I have other things that feel like a higher priority for me. Um, do I have the picture of it anywhere? I do. I have a picture of it somewhere. It's a village bookstore by Randall Spangler. not a great picture it's got circles all over it because those are all the hidden or not hidden kitties on it um i love this i do um but again i started it very early in my cross stitch career i'm um, actually i think it was a new year new start in 2020 so i had been stitching for about six months and i just had no concept of how huge it was um so i have it on this giant hoop uh which worked really well when i was trying worked kind of well when I was trying to use uh, a, like a floor stand um, but I didn't get good floor stands and in any case I can still work on it in the giant hoop and I like it in the giant hoop because I don't want to have to move it around a lot but anyway all I have done is this so um, I love this project I do want to finish it but I don't know I mean, this is a life, a lifetime project, definitely a lifetime project. And, um, and this is the reason why I kind of don't want to have any other like large, like full size, full coverage that I stick to the minis and the quick stitches. I did make an exception this year because I fell in love with something. But the one that I picked at least, I keep telling myself that this is this makes it better is um, no background. You'll see that as we get further along. So honestly, I think that this is going to go back in the inactive pile for this year. And it probably won't get worked on. So, um, but it's definitely not going anywhere because I do want to work on it and finish it someday. Maybe when I'm retired or something. Okay, wait. Sorry, I know this is, this is a waste of time for me to open this back up and put this in, but if I don't, it's going to be lost, and I don't want that. Everybody always says that when they do with parades. It's like, you know, I have to put it back in the right place, or else it's going to be a big trouble later, and I understand that sentiment, 100%. Okay. So that was Village Big Store. Next, Ella the Frog Princess. This, I think this was my first, like, full mirabilia. I did an Orc Corbett before this, but, um, and, come on, where's the picture? Where is my picture? Princess. I think my two like 
favorite like fairy tales are the frog princess and princess and the pea um i'm doing this on a 28 count even weave that i got off ebay and i didn't realize at the time that like especially over dyed fabrics like the color can move especially if it's been like folded for a long time so i'm not in love with this fabric but i think what's basically going to happen is once it's done i'll kind of like frame it or make a pillow out of it tightly to kind of get rid of the majority of the fabric part that i don't like so this year i was able to finish her face her skin is one over one did i say that um her skin is one over one so i still have the one over one to do on both of the arms left um i mean they're started they're not completed but i did finish her face haven't done any beading on her um but she just she still has a giant dress left as you can see and um while i love this project and i love her yellow the yellows and the taupes and the browns are not my favorite colors to work on so but i'm gonna have to just suck it up because i do want to get her done i don't know that i'll get her done this year but i do want to get her done um i saw a conversion of her where they changed it to purples and it was so i wish i had seen that before because that would have been great but she's really pretty anyway and um, i'm really happy i got her face and and chest area done this year and she will come out <clears throat> in is it March when I do my fancy folk so she will definitely get some love then okay Sampler Osha, oh, Sampler Osha is still on my list, but I can't show it to you because it's finished now. Oh, I just finished it. Okay, Calendar Cats. I'm on spring. This is one I'm thinking about putting in the inactive pile for this year, just because I'm not, I'm not super enjoying it. And I hate that because I really like the project, but I just am not super enjoying it. I was super excited about it. I dyed the fabric for it. Um, so I have all the fabric in there. So it's four little charts. This is by um, Edie Harper, who is Charlie Harper's wife. So they have a very similar style, art style. Um, and I just, I don't know. I really like the chart. I mean, I like the, the artwork. I'm not enjoying the project. First of all, I'm putting it on 18 count. And so it feels like it's taking forever um because they're you know deceptively like huge you know I mean they look small but then you start stitching on them and you stitch on them and stitch on them and stitch on them and stitch on them and stitch on so this is spring and as you can see it's still, I mean, I feel like I've worked on that cat forever and it's like barely started. So, I don't know. As I said, um, yeah, I think this is going to go in the inactive pile, at least for, for now. Um, these are the other uh, fabrics that I dyed. Um, so I was spraying, this is summer, autumn, and winter. Um, I don't know. I, it may go in the inactive pile. It may, you know, if I can't get over that, that I'm not enjoying it, I may do it as a, as a giveaway and give away the fabrics that I dyed and the chart. Um, and I guess the half finished, the half finished, uh, too if anybody wants it I don't know I haven't made a decision on that one but I do know that it's just it's not bringing me the joy that I want to get from it when I stitch on it um okay next uh cat collage by Laurel Birch Designs this project uh was a new year you start for me one year I can't remember which year um 
And it was, I consider it a gift from my friend Don Frisch because she sent me a gift card for uh, Hanukkah and that this is what I used to, to, I mean, this is what I bought with it. So this is a Design Works kit, Laurel Birch Cat Collage. Um, it came with it an Ada. I changed it out for a white even weave, um, which was kind of dumb um, because so little of the fabric actually shows, but I like stitching on the even weave. So uh, my only problem with this chart or this kit, and I say this every time, is that the colors of the floss, um, I have a little world birch back with my flosses in it. It's pretty cool. Um, they're not as vibrant as the colors on the photo. They're just not. I mean, they're pretty and they are vibrant, but they're just not as dark and vibrant as the photo colors. And it bums me out a little bit. So, um, but it's okay. Uh, I do enjoy working on this. Um, I, I work on it, uh, during my full coverage. Um, January because it pretty much is. I don't work in it the same way as I do my regular full coverages. Um, I kind of like do the black outlines like coloring book and then fill them in. But that's how far I am. Um, uh, and these cats just, these cats make me happy. They just, they do, they make me laugh. This project though did teach me that I need to have grime guards and stuff that I'm going to kind of leave in a Q-snap or something or a hoop because it does have sort of like dirt, dirt edges at one place that actually is going to get covered up. But yeah, it taught me like for my regular projects, when I take them in and out of the hoops every day, then I don't necessarily need to worry about it. But for a project that I'm leaving in, a hoop or a gram or a, a Q snap. Um, I need to have gram birds. So I started using gram birds. Okay. Uh, Starburst and Stripes Forever. This is pretty much like my only patriotic ish sort of chart. Um, although I did do, um, I did do the Suffrage Act one. Um, but I just, I really liked the specialty stitch on this. It's Charlene Designs. Um, I just like the specialty stitch. So that's why I got this. And um, I'm close-ish to a finish, but it wasn't something I wanted to, you know, put in my, my flight to a finish thing this year. But it could possibly get done next year because I am very close. I think I have three more stripes. And this is just done on a, like a Fiddler's Cloth Ada. And I pull my own colors for it. I'm not using called for. But I think it's, I think it's really pretty. Um, I don't know what I would want to do with it when I'm done with it. Um, as I said, I'm not like, I don't decorate for like, like uh, 4th of July type holidays or anything like that. But I enjoy, I enjoy, I have been enjoying stitching on this. So when it's done, maybe I'll make a little pillow out of it, you know, and just put it up on a shelf or something. Okay. Wind Moon Fairy. So this is a Dimensions Gold. I think this is my first, well, obviously, yes, this is my first Dimensions Gold kit that I started. Um, I remember when I first started stitching, I bought uh, Charming um, which is a Dimensions Gold Petite. And this was like the first couple months that I've been stitching. And I opened it up and I looked at the chart and I was like, nope. And I like folded it and put it back in. I'm like, this is just way too complicated to where I was at that point. Um, but Wind Moon Fairy, let's see, Wind Moon Fairy was started in 2021. So I already been stitching for like about two years at that point. So, um, so I was ready. Uh, I was ready for Dimensions Gold. So yeah, we are in 2021 um, now, um, as far as Starburst and Stripes was started in 2021, and that was the first one that was started in 2021. Oh, I should show you the picture. Now, anybody who has been watching me for any length of time, you know that um, 
I'm a sucker for a chart that has a black cat in it just because of my black cat, um, Baggy. So, of course, this is the one that I wanted. I've seen people stitch this and they've done it like on a, on a, um, over dyed fabric and then just are stitching like the moon and the girl and like the background have left out. But I didn't think to do that. And, um, plus I kind of think I wanted, especially at the, you know, for the first one, I wanted the full Dimensions Gold experience. So this is where I am. And actually last time I worked on it, I wanted to kind of work on the background and get to the top. Um, so I haven't really done any like the exciting, exciting bits yet, although I do have the cat partially done, not backstitched or anything. Um, but, uh, cause the background is, is half stitches. It's done with like three strands. So it's thicker back stitches, but it's back stitches. So it goes, not back stitches, 10 stitches. So it goes fast or half cross. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying that one. I think she'll come out when I do fancy ladies again. I think she's on that list for fancy folk, I should say. Um, Okay, then my next one is also a fancy lady, but this is a uh, Bella Filipina, my first Bella Filipina, and I feel like we've jumped. I guess this was 20. Oh, I guess I started her right exactly at the same time as my moon fairy. Hmm, I guess I couldn't wait for both of them. So this is Bellatrix. And this is on a 28 count Opal Lugana by a uh, hand by Rolanda. I love fabrics. Love, love, love. And this is where I am with her. So, I mean, I have quite a bit done on her, but there's still a lot more to do because we've got the whole, um, you know, mountain range thingy here. We've got the whole book stand um, and, of course, the whole border and all of the hanging drapey bits and the candles and everything. And I have to say, with Bella Filipinas, the faces, at least for me, when I stitch the Bella Filipinas, the faces come out so amazingly beautiful. Um, I did not do her skin one over one. Didn't think about it. I could have, because this is a 28 count. Didn't think about it. Um, I just got Olivia the Forest Fairy, or the Forest Witch, I'm not sure. Um, as a gift and they're kind of like companion pieces because Olivia is facing the other way um, so I want to do her on a 28 count opal something as well um, and I won't do her skin one over one because I want them to kind of match and of course I loved her too because she also has a black cat which isn't done yet but you can see his tail right there so I love this project um, But again, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not like in a rush. Like I don't feel like, I mean, I get to a point with certain things where it's like, okay, yeah, it needs to be done this year. But, um, but for the most part, no, I don't put that pressure on. Now the problem is though, is that as you do go along, um, you know, you finish the little projects and you end up with all of the big ones left. That is an issue. Um, so I'm going to try and keep that in mind and anything that I start this year, you know, hopefully I can kind of start smaller things. Um, cause I don't just don't, I just don't want to keep piling on like the big, huge projects, but I say that. And if something, if I love something, I want to start it. And that's just how it is. Okay. Um, Next one is a 
uh, full coverage. Kitty Magic by Katerina Kukiatis, uh, charted by Heaven Earth Designs. Now, this is supposed to be a quick stitch, but it is not really that small. Um, it is 375 by 355, so yeah. Um, I was really intrigued by this one because it's, you know, basically a monochromatic piece. It does have green in the eyes, so there are a bunch of colors of green um, that they're going to be used for a very small amount of stitches. Um, there's only 51 colors in this. Um, most of the Heaven Earth designs I do have about 90, um, 90 to 120. So that is a lot less colors. Um, and then when you consider that there's going to be at least 10 to, 10 to 20, I'm not sure how many greens in there um, that you're barely using, it's mostly the, the blacks, creams, grays, whites. So I'm still in the light background area that you can barely see. I don't even know if you can see that at all with the, let me see if I, yeah, I don't know if you can see it at all, the, the triangle there. Uh, yeah, so I keep thinking like, oh, next, next row I'll get, um, you know, I wasn't even holding it the right way. <laughs> there yeah so you can kind of see where the light grays are coming in right there there you can kind of see the stitching but I haven't hit any of the dark darker like fur colors yet and I keep thinking like I will I will but I haven't yet um, if you notice any of like these bags with like the big cats on it and stuff those are made by my friend Tracy the project bags um, I have five of them that I made. Um, I'm not going to make any more. I realized after making those first five project bags that I could do it. I didn't enjoy doing it. And it hurts my back. So sewing, sewing is not my thing. Um, again, I could, I can, I have the ability, don't like to. Um, okay, next is another... Uh, Bella Filipina and this is my mermaid and let's see oh I'm interested that this was done in 20 starting 2021 as well yeah so this the fabric for this was a big saga. Um, I had a very specific idea in mind of what I wanted my fabric to look like. Um, couldn't find anything that I enjoyed. I bought, I think I bought two or three different things that just weren't it. And so then I tried to dye it and I wanted to do it on a 28 count uh, Lugana because I wanted to do the skin one over one. And I could not get the Lugana to take enough dye. Like it wouldn't get dark enough. Um, so I ended up doing it on an Ada. And um, so I'm not doing the skin one over one, but I got the exact color that I wanted for my fabric. Um, I also wanted it to be a fluorescent because you will notice that this is not your, if this is your first time watching me and you're not familiar with me, most of my fabrics are bright and opalescent. I am not a white or beige fabric person. I just am not. Um, but anyway, I usually stitch on my mermaids in the summer. Um, I don't know, that just seems like when I want to do it. So, um, but here she is. I got a lot done on her this year. I got her face finished and her hair actually is finished as well. I mean, no beading yet, but she's just, look how pretty, look how pretty that face is. So I do have to say, you know, I mean, I have three, three fancy lady designers that I have worked on so far. Um, and I like them all for different, you know, different reasons, different, um, you know, 
Mirabilia is very classic sort of uh, looks. Um, the Filipinas, his, his faces are just so beautiful. I mean, they just, it almost like it makes me hurt because they're so pretty. And um, I don't know if that makes sense, but, and then I have a Joan Elliott that's coming up, um, which I've just been thoroughly enjoying. So all three of them, I have many more patterns that um, are in my, my um, stash that, you know, the, the fancy ladies are not going to, are not going to be ending for me, which is funny because if you go back and look at my first video or so, I was like, oh, the fancy ladies are really pretty, but I never want to stitch them. That has changed. Okay. Next, Dogs and Cats County Canvas. So this is a needlepoint kit, not kit, a needlepoint, um, needlepoint, what is this called? A needlepoint. A needlepoint <laughs> that I got off of eBay. Printed terribly. Um, very, very crooked, you can see, because I've got my outline line going here. Um, luckily, it's it's on the line horizontally, but it's completely off vertically, so I'm having to make adjustments. But I've turned it into, instead of just a straight needlepoint, into sort of a counter canvas project. Um, so I'm doing all of the backgrounds using um, just stitches that I'm making up, patterns. Um, and then I'm stitching the actual animals with um, pearl cotton. So, and I'm changing, I am doing some changes um, to some of the animals, um, which I haven't gotten to yet. Um, this is going to be turned into a black and white cat. Uh, hopefully I will be able to kind of use the part pattern here to kind of change that. And then this is going to be changed into a black and white dog to my dog Frodo, um, who I lost in 2019. He's the right shape. He just needs to be black and white. So I finished, well, I have a little bit more of the white to do on this one. Um, this is done and this is done. I mean, obviously that's a baggie. So that is my Dogs and Cats County Canvas piece. Um, this is like an alternate that I do during Zooms. Um, I tend to st like to stitch on County Canvas pieces during Zoom uh, meetings because I can do it with uh, the glasses that I need to see the screen. Um, regular stitching I do with a higher magnification glass glasses. But when I'm wearing those, I can't see the screen on a zoom and so having to change it it makes me feel sick so i tend to work on counter canvas during um during zooms and that is like my alternate okay twisted rainbow sampler um by northern expressions is this one I'm sure you guys have seen this. I do have a picture somewhere, but <sighs> nope, I'm not seeing it. All right, well, anyway, um. This is a combination of cross stitch and specialty stitches. I'm doing it with Sulky on this sort of gray um, 32 count charcoal Lugana. And I've added a bunch of colors. So I'm splitting it so that I can have more colors of the Sulky. Um, it does go in rainbow, so it'll like have two, two, um, splits so in the top half it'll be like lighter darker colors and then when we get down to the lower part it'll be darker lighter um, and 
that is sometimes difficult to work on. Um, the specialty stitches can be a bear. Okay. Uh, Autumn Equinox Pixie. This is also Bella Filipina. And this, this one, um, I did a skin conversion. It wasn't originally planned. However, the fabric that I chose, which I love, this is a, a hand dyed by Rolanda fabric, shocker. Um, the skin that was called for just faded right into the fabric. It looked terrible. Um, all I had done was like one arm, this arm. No, this arm, I think. Anyway, I pulled it out, changed to a darker skin tone uh, using Lord Libidan's uh, guideline, um, stitched the whole thing, realized it was still too late, and pulled it out again and went for a darker skin tone. So she turned out to have this lovely dark skin. And again, her face is gorgeous. This one I've started some of the beading. I just couldn't wait. But I love this, this project as well. I guess I don't need to say that, right? I mean, if I have it and I'm stitching on it, I'd probably love it. Okay. Blue bouquet with cat. This is a design works kit by artwork by Mimi Thomas. Um, obviously I picked it because it's got a black cat that looks very much like baggy and beautiful flowers. I like flowers. I like stitching on flowers. I'm doing this on a pole stitches fabric. And I'm still kind of at the top there. Okay, next is my little snap jargon. This is a design by Diane Allaire, Custom Crafts Inc. I've never thought of myself as a dragon person, but I went through a phase of, I don't know, wanting to stitch the dragons. Um, and I just, this one was so cute. And it reminds me of gran my grandfather. Um, he had snapdragons in his backyard and I used to like to play with them all the time. I'm stitching, ugh, I keep messing up. Hold on. Um, I am stitching this on an 18 count opal hand dyed by Rolanda fabric. And I've got a good bit of this done. Oops. He's so cute. Next is, uh, excuse me, 
Mini Flower Kitty by Jeremiah Kentner, which is a full coverage uh, by Heaven and Earth. Love, love, love this project. Um, I love the watercoloriness of it. Um, this is where I kind of started doing my full coverages on uh, using tent stitch on 28 count. Two over one tent. So I still do two over one or two. I use two strands. I like doing the loop start and I just like working with two strands. Um, but I started doing the full coverages with tent stint on 28 count. And I just like how it looks. I like the fact that they're smaller. Um, yeah, and I like the fact that the tent makes it just a little bit faster and easier to work on. Okay. Okay. This is... Panda. So I started this, I got this idea for sort of an ongoing project of using backgrounds fabrics. Um, and I've been sort of stitching a lot of Bewitching Pixies on them. Um, you can see one right over my head. I have another one that I finished this year that was up there but fell off and I haven't put it up because I'm going to show it next week and then I'll, and then I'll climb back up and put it up. And I have another one towards the end. Um, however, uh, I got this fabric and a Pixie didn't really fit. Although I like the fabric, so I found um, a, a, a picture that would fit. So I'm putting these pandas on this background fabric. And I have some birds that I'm going to put up in the top of the bamboos. These are Goldian, Goldian finches, which do live in bamboo forests. So they'll be on it too. And this is where I am. So the fabric is all printed and then, you know, I've got my little pandas, which I don't know if I, once I got in there, I feel like I didn't place them exactly perfect. So I don't know. I don't know about this project. I'm not sure that I'm 100% thrilled with it, but you know, I'm not ready to make it inactive or anything like that. Um... Okay, next, Rainbow Cat's Needlepoint. I think this one is going to go in the inactive pile for a while because I'm just not super enjoying it. Um, I got this Design Works Needlework Kit. I was pretty unhappy. I like how it looks, but I'm pretty unhappy with the quality of the yarn that was given. It just is, it's cheap looking. It just, it is. And, you know, and I feel like, why am I putting my time in on something that I'm just not loving? Um, I also am not doing it with regular needlepoint. I just am using sort of specialty, you know, needlepoint stitches, interesting shape stitches and stuff to make it go faster and make it more interesting. But I'm just not, I'm not loving it. So I'm kind of thinking that this one is going to go in the inactive whip pile for a while. And I'll revisit later and decide what I want to do about it. Um, okay, next is my Green Lace Garden Mandala, which is my first bigger Chatelaine. I've done several little tiny ones, um, but this is my first one that, it's actually a medium size. I don't think I'm ever going to do a big one, but um, I have like four, four more kitted up, ready to go, but I want to finish this one first. So this is a crappy picture. Forgive that. I am on it. So they're done in like sections. Um, I think because they were like classes, so they came out in sections. So this whole center thing was like one, and then this is the second one, and then the third is like these corner bits in here. So this is as far out as it goes. Julie from Stitching at the Cabin got me 
tiny bit obsessed with Chatelaine's. I went through a very, I'm obsessed with Chatelaine's period, bought a bunch of stuff, and then now it's all in my kit and stuff, but I can only do so much at one time. So, um, so I have more to start, but I want to finish that one first. Um, next, a uh, kitty litter, which is another Dimensions Gold. I started this at the very end of last year. It was supposed to be kind of be like a new year new start, but I can't wait. So I just did it right at the end of December. Um, love it. So again, it's a Dimensions Gold kit and I'm just using all the kit stuff. Since it's full coverage, I didn't care so much about the fact that it's on cream fabric. Um, but I haven't worked on this in quite a while, so I will be excited to take this out again. I think it's going to come out in January because it's pretty much full coverage. So that's how far I am so far. And I'll probably move over because I got, you know, this cat sort of done. Um, so I'll move over and work on this gray cat and then also more, uh, you know, the background. And this background is half stitches, but it's like five strands of floss. I have to use this. I have to use a different needle because I can't, first of all, I can't thread five strands of floss, floss and I need a bigger needle just to like bore a hole through the fabric big enough to drag that floss through. It's crazy. my next these I started this was my new year new start this year so this was started on 12 31 uh, 2022 and these are tardy by Artisy, pinky and blue boy the two famous paintings um, which I've explained these were painted a hundred years apart but they're somehow always like put together as a couple um, one is by Thomas Gainsborough and Sir Thomas Lawrence. Um, and I've seen these in real life. They're in the Huntington uh, Museum and Gardens in I think, Pasadena. Um, but I have seen them in real life. And my mom had little reproductions of them in her house and I have them now. So I've always liked these. And when I first started stitching and I saw people were doing like full coverage, like masterworks. The only ones I ever thought, oh, I would really want to do those was Pinky and Blue Boy. And then I found them last year. So they were my new year new start. And they're being done on 28 count Jaslyn. Um, and I, I'm doing them at the same time on the same piece of fabric, but they're, they will be cut apart. I just want them to kind of grow at the same rate. You know, being full coverage, they'll take forever. But so this is actually Pinky and Blue Boy. And, you know, we're still in the background on those, so it's not too exciting. But they'll get a little bit more work, at least, done on next month. And then Fancy Folk. When I do Fancy Folk, they'll come out as well. So now, everything that was done on the last day of last year, so everything that's left, which is quite a bit still, um, was started this year. Okay, so Orange Mood is a black work kit by Riolis. And I started this with um, Meg. I think I think Meg Cross Stitch in the Moon is the one who wanted to start this with me. Um, it's kind of just fun. I mean, they consider it a holiday pattern, and I guess it is like, sort of Christmas baubles, but I don't think of them as Christmas. I just think of them as pretty baubles with a hot drink. This is done on a 14 count black Ada, which I'm actually not having any problem stitching on. I don't know what this schmutz is on the fabric right there, but, and oh, so pretty. The colors are just so pretty on the black and, um, I kind of enjoy the black work. It's a, it's a nice sort of alternative. There are some cross stitches in there, but. Okay, next, um, 
Let sleeping dragons lie. So this is my other large full coverage that um, it's like one of these what was I thinking projects. But you know, um, as I, I explained when I when I first showed it to you guys, I saw this pattern and didn't buy it for like two weeks and couldn't get it out of my head. So um, it was kind of like to a point where it's like, well, obviously I meant to stitch it. It's artwork by Amy Brown, and um, it started by Unconventional Cross Stitch. It's gonna take me forever. It's large. It is 650 by 459, but no background. Um, I dyed the fabric for it myself because um, I had another specific idea of what I wanted, and since it's all purpley, greeny, bluey colors, I wanted completely the opposite, so I kind of went with a sunset, um, orange, yellow, peach, and I'm stitching it from the corner up, and I'm still, you know, kind of in the corner. So nothing really exciting to see yet, but... I am noticing when I'm pulling out these full coverages, like people worry about lines and I do kind of see uh, lines in my stitching. Um, but you know, it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> I don't really care. And when it's done and it's stretched out, um, I'm not gonna care. That is Let Sleeping Dragons Lie. Country Garden County Canvas. This is my my County Canvas piece that I've been working on this year. Um, I thought I would get this done um, quicker than I have. This one has been just a little bit more tedious than other County Canvases that I've done. Uh, don't know why. Don't know why. Um, it just is. Um, but I am at the you know the final. Basically, this pattern goes all the way around, and then there's a fat row of the purple sparkly, and then it's done. So this will definitely get done next year, um, whether it will be done quickly next year or it will take all year. I don't know, but it will get done. <clears throat> okay, Sweet Pea Fairy. This is my first John Elliott, and I got to say, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, I just love how sort of just hippie, hippie dippy she is. Uh, I'm doing it on 20 count, 20, actually it says 28 count. This is, it isn't, it's 32 count. I've got to change that. It's a 32 count Opal Lugana by Hand Dye by Rolanda. I am doing the skin one over one or two, two over one tent, sorry. Um, on 32 count. Not super easy, but look how pretty this fabric is. Um, not super easy, but the results, oof, she's so pretty. Look at that. And the skin just looks like velvet. So, very, very fun to work on this one. Love it. Okay, Whew, we're almost at an hour and a half. Hope you guys like long videos. Um, okay, mini new solar system. I started this year on a whim. It will probably go to my nephew um, or my brother. My nephew's into the solar system and space stuff now. If he doesn't stay that way, then 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 maybe my brother because he's always going to be into it. <laughs> So mini new solar system, and this is pretty small. This was a um, Artisy uh, adapted from artwork by Adrian Chesterman, and this is 200 by 139. So you know it is actually small for a full coverage, um, and it stitches pretty quickly. I feel like um, again I'm doing it on 28 count, two over one tent. The colors in it just, whew. 
It just has a lot of depth. I just hit like the blue like planet thingy there, which was very exciting after all of these oranges and reds and yellows. It's going to be very fun to hit a different color. Um, Prickly Owl by Dimension. So this is really on my short list to possibly get finished in the next week. Um, this was a gift from my friend Don Frisch. So this is kind of a friend project because Dawn gave me the chart. Um, she's like the first like person I met through my channel um, in Arizona when I went on a trip with Erin and Stacy, And she gifted me this little chart. And then my friend Julie from Stitching at the Cabin had it and we decided to stitch it you know, together. Basically stitching it, starting it at the same time. And then each of us doing our own thing. Um, I, as I said, don't tend to use my kit white or beige Ada. Um, I had a, an Ada from another kit that was blue and then I over dyed it with some turquoise. So I got a really pretty like modely um, effect and I like the way it looks. And that's where I am. So I don't know if I can finish this in the next week. I mean, I have the one more cactus to do, the bigger cactus with the big cactus flower. So I don't know if it's gonna be possible, but I am going to work on basically this one and then my frog, uh, frog bouquet, which you'll see in a minute, um, mostly in the next week to see how much I can get done on them. Um, if I don't get them done, then they will get done next year, definitely. Okay, Peacock Majesty by Teresa Winsler. This is my first Teresa Winsler, and I would venture to say my only Teresa Winsler. Um, I don't love Teresa Winsler. I mean, I love the way it looks. Working on it, not my favorite thing. So, Amazon guy just like stopped something, and my window's open. That was a little embarrassing. So, beautiful. It's going to be gorgeous. Um, I don't know. This was a, I didn't, I came with kit fabric. It was a kit. Um, so I came with kit fabric. I changed it out for this little piece of 18 count. Hand dyed by Rolanda Ada. And I think it goes, oh my goodness, I think it goes this way. Yeah, this way. So, I mean, it's, it's gorgeous, but I just, I don't like all the blends. I just, they're just a pain to me. Um, yeah, I just don't, I just don't enjoy that. It's too fiddly. And it doesn't, it doesn't fit well in my method of kitting up, especially with this small one, because like I could see kitting up all of the blended threads and I, people have said that like, oh, put your blends together first, but this was a kit. So there's not that much floss. You can't split it up that easily. So that's part of the issue, I think. Okay. Uh, next we're getting down towards the end is Black Pearl. This I was hoping to possibly get done this year, but no. So this is probably going to go until the summer, be, you know, set aside until the summer. Um, and I'll finish it then. Black Pearl by Primitive Hair. I'm not doing it quite as primitive, I guess, as <laughs> the Primitive Hair might like. Um, I'm doing this on a 28 count Opal Lagana by Dying for Cross Stitch. And then I changed all the colors. I'm doing it all in silk. Um, I changed the color of her skin. Well, I changed all the colors, but I think it's, I think I really like it. Uh, it's just not, it's just very different than the original. Okay, frog with bouquet. Um, this 
I've been working on quite a bit this week. This is a Design Works kit. Frog with bouquet. This is what I am. And this is the companion piece to the piece I finished last year, which is Frog Dancer. I have stretchy jeans on and the zippers never stay up. Do you guys have that issue with you have stretchy type jeans? This is Frog Dancer. So this is the one I did last year and then this is the companion piece. So I do want to get that one finished sooner rather than later so that I can finish them, fully finish them, and pick them up. Okay, Lion Head by Donna Cooler. This was my uh, lion, my August lion pattern that I chose for this year. Um, I can't show you the picture of it because uh, it's in a book, which I don't even know where it is at the moment, and I have it on my phone to stitch from. Not totally enjoying this project, but you know, it's small, so I really should just suck it up and finish it um it'll be cute when it's done i'm doing it with sulky on perforated paper so i either need to finish it or like toss it you know but I, i'll finish it i mean I'll, I'll definitely finish it before august because then it'll be time to pick a new one <laughs> Um, okay, Phoenix Queen. I started this in honor of um, my friend Julie's mom, who is going through some breast cancer treatment. Um, I feel like this is my Misha, Misha Bayrach piece. Um, again, started for Julie's mom, um, but in general um obviously i'm not going to get it done really soon and so when i stitch on this um i kind of say the prayer in my head a little bit and think about all the people that need healing and strength and stuff so yeah so phoenix queen is my is my misha Barak piece and um it is a bella filipina i'm stitching this on 28 Count Moss Dark Opal Lugana by Dying for Cross Stitch. Um, I'm really enjoying the Dying for Cross Stitch fabrics uh, along with uh, Anti by Rolanda. So I think that's kind of my second, my second go-to choice. This always comes out very yellow on my TV when I watch it. Um, it is, it's, it's, really like a pea soup color pretty pea soup color and it just goes really well with the with the colors of the of the piece um but i just feel like when i show it to you guys you're not really seeing it properly um i don't know it could be my tv that has the color wrong but it also could be the light that i have here how it's recording i don't know Okay, uh, Zinnia is my current, that is not it, this is it, it's my current Bewitching Pixie that I'm doing on the backgrounds fabric. Um, she's the fun one with the cocktail. Um, I'm not stitching like the archway and everything because it doesn't fit with this fabric. Um, but I did add an owl from another pattern um, that won't that won't work with the fabric that I chose for that one. So um, yeah, so I'm mixing and matching a little bit. So it's this cool gateway fabric. I put this little owl up here, and then I had to start her from the bottom because that's how I could get her positioned correctly. Um, so yeah, she's just gonna be welcoming you into her mansion with her little cocktail.
These backgrounds fabrics are all from um, Fabric Flare um, that I got from Dove Stitch. But you want to get, um, you want to order if you're ordering from Dove Stitch. You want to order from the Dove Stitch website, not the Dove, Dove Stitch Etsy shop, because there's a lot more on the website. Okay, Moon Fairy. This is what I'm having in my purse. Um, although my little bag here is the zipper broke, so I need to change it out. Um, this is what I have so far. I'll show you the picture in a second. I'm just stitching this on silk, with silk, on a piece of fabric that I hand dyed. Um, this is a companion. This is, this is what I'm doing. And I stitched this one a couple years ago, I guess. And so this is going to be the companion to it. So for this one, I'm going to, I put a uh, blending filament in the wings on this one, but on this one, I'm going to put the blending filament in the star. Tuxedo cat eyes. Only two more guys. Tuxedo cat eyes. I started in August this year on a whim. Uh, it's a full coverage, but it's it's got big blocks of color, so I think it'll stitch fairly quickly, and it looks very much like my cat um, Kirby that I had uh, for many, many years. He died when he was over 21 years old. Um, and this is sort of a companion to the first uh, full coverage that I did, which was um, which was uh, Lavender Roses. But not looking too exciting yet. I just hit the first eye. So all of those golds are coming in. And again, I'm doing this on a 28 count. Two over one tent. Am I doing this two over one tent? No, I'm doing full crosses on this. Because I'm doing it on 18 count. That's why. Um, and the reason I'm doing it on 18 count is because Lavender Roses was on 18 count and I wanted it to be a relatively similar size. Okay, and then the last thing I just started um, I kind of felt like I should be stitching a Hanukkah pattern around Hanukkah time. So I found a cute, uh, pattern. Um, I don't have it in color, sorry, but I just, it's a Hanukkah gnome. It's a gnome -y. Um, not hugely into gnomes, but I thought this one was like really adorable and he just spoke to me. So, you know, I went for it and, um, I'm having it, I have it on a piece of 14 count opal angelic by Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, this will be set aside until next holiday season. I just got this top of his, his hat. Come on, fabric. Top of his hat then. Lots of blues in this. So yeah, that is where I am at with that one. And with that, that is the end. That is the end of all of my whips. So, wow. <laughs> um, I know there's those of you out there who are kind of like love the statistic type thing. So I do have a few to tell you. So um, let's see. I have... 41, that was 41 whips now, and I have two that I'm going to maybe try and get finished by the end of, um, by the end of the year, but I don't know. Um, so we can just leave it at 40, 41 for now. So that was 41 whips plus five inactive. Um, I think two of the inactive are going to come out of inactive and two of the active are going to go in. So it's going to, 
stay the same as far as numbers. Um, I have seven full coverage projects, uh, like heaven and earth type full coverage, plus three, three extras. So 10, if you consider, if you add in the two, uh, dimensions gold and the cat collage, cause those are pretty much full coverage. So, so that makes 10 full coverage ish projects. Um, I have 10 projects that I'm pretty sure I can get done next year that were in that pile, but you know, best laid plans, who knows? Um, I have six large of like fairy ladies, four, four are Bella, four are Bella Filipinas, one Mirabilia and one Joan Elliott. So that is not, that's not counting Zinnia. Um, I don't consider her like a large one. Um, let's see what else. I think I have one missing project. I still don't know where Chester's place is. Um, and then let's see, when you talk about my other stuff, I have the one latch hook that I'm going to really try and get done. Um, crochet. So finishes, I had 15 finishes this year. So you'll see those in the next extra video that I do. Um, and I thought that that was kind of like, I was kind of being hard on myself thinking like, well, gosh, I got over 21 projects in last year and I only did 15 this year. Like, but then I realized like, okay, I started crocheting and I got 14 crochet finishes last year too. So, um, yeah, so I wasn't, you know, sleeping on the job or anything like that. I got a lot of stuff done. So that is pretty much where I am. Um, thank you for sticking with me. Uh, love to hear comments. Is there any project that you especially like or want to know anything about? Um, I will do my best. Um, I have a huge mess here to clean up. It's good though, because now I, ha I can reorganize and, and get set for next year. I think I'll pull out all of my um, projects that I'm planning on working on January, which is a full coverage for me. So that'll be exciting. And, um, yeah, I think this is it. I hope you guys have a very happy end of the year. The last, uh, week and a half. Um, today is the Christmas Eve Eve, right? So Christmas Eve tomorrow. And, um, so I'm, it's Saturday. I have two more days off, which will be fantastic. And then a short week and another three days off. Very happy about that. Um, yeah, so... I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'm trying to run my fingers through my hair and getting caught in knots. That's kind of embarrassing. Um, anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was fun to do, although I'm a little bit like, ah, with all of the stuff I have to put away right now. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously stitching and cross stitch and crochet and all the fiber arts is, is a love of mine. It keeps me sane. It keeps me grounded and, um, and it keeps me being creative, which I think is one of the most important things for me and my my well-being. So I know a lot of you guys are, are like-minded. Um, but I want to say thank you so much for all of your love and support throughout the, the past four years, the past year. Um, you know, we've been through ups and downs together. Um, I do have a, I mean, if you're watching this right away, I have a Zoom coming up on New Year's Eve. So if you would like to join in on that, check out any of my videos, not this one, but check out any of my other videos in the description box or my last video in the description box and I'll give you all the information. But um, until I see you guys again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. Happy coming into 2024. Um, happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. All the things. Thank you all. Bye-bye.